how is everybody doing this morning? You glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Tell you what, if you will, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Glad to see you here this morning. Glad to have you watching through that camera. You expecting something from the Lord this morning? Amen. If you're expecting, the Lord's going to give you something this morning. Amen. I've never went in front of him. I've never went before him and asked him for something what he didn't give it to me. Amen. I ain't going to say I always understood it at that moment, but he gave me something. Amen. Sometimes it took me a day or two to meditate on it and study about it and pray about it. And... But he's always been there. He's always showed up. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity of coming into your house. Lord, I just thank you for each and everyone that's here this morning. Lord, I thank you for everyone that's watching through that camera. Lord, I thank you for opening every heart, every mind. Lord, making it receptive under your word. And Lord, I thank you for it right now. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. And we're just going to start doing Romans chapter 28. We're going to start at verse number 1. He said, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Amen. He said, And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. He said, If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Amen. You want to start your new year off right? You want to have the best year you've ever had? Make sure you're hearing his voice. Amen. Every single day, make sure you're hearing his voice. Right? Amen. You, the good news is he already knows the traps the devil's got set for me and you. Right? So shouldn't, shouldn't we want to be hooked up with him? Shouldn't we want to spend time with him to know the pitfalls, to know the problems that the devil's got set in front of us and before us? Amen? Well, the only way that's going to happen is by spending time with him. Amen? Right? You get close to your family, how? By spending time with them. You get close to friends. I mean, your best friend. One day you had to meet them for the first time, didn't you? Right? You got a very best friend, but you had to meet them that day for the first time. Well, the first time you met them, they weren't your very best friend, were they? You had to spend time with them. Amen? Y'all had to grow together. Right? You had to become almost one. You could think alike, you know alike, you, you do the same things, all different things. But my point is, you became best friends because you spent time together. Amen? The Lord wants to be your best friend. He wants to spend time with you. Amen? That's why He, that's why he, he created us, was to have fellowship with us. Right? He didn't create us to go out and just do what we want to do. He did, give, he did make us free, though, didn't he? He said, you choose this day. It's up to you. Right? Life and blessing or death and cursing. Amen? Now, the Lord didn't say he was going to put a curse on you, did he? But he said, I'm going to take my hands off. Amen? Well, what happens when, when the Lord takes his hands off? What happens to a situation when he takes his hands off of it? Not that he's making it happen, but what happens when he takes his hands off? Then you're in it by yourself, ain't you? And what does the Word tell us about what we can do by ourselves and through our means? What does the Word tell us? The Word says, without me, you can do nothing. Right? He's saying, without me, you can do nothing beneficial. You're not going to do anything in the long run, it's going to help other people. It's going to help yourself, right? Because let's face it, this world don't love me and you. Hello? This world does not love me and you. It don't, I'm sorry. So many people get up and they serve this world every single day. Amen? Never once even thinking about the Lord. Never once. But they serve this world religiously. And then they wonder, why am I in the shape I'm in? Why do I have no hope? Amen? 
The world don't want you to have hope. The world wants to destroy you. Amen? A lot of people don't understand that yet. They still think that the Lord is here and He's in control of this earth. But the Word tells us that the Lord gave the earth to man. He gave it to us. He's not in control. Amen? His overall picture is going to happen. I believe that. You know what? It can happen with me and you or it can happen without us. We don't have to be a part of it. Amen? It's up to us. But he gave the earth to me and you. He gave it to man. He said the devil is the ruler of this world. Ain't that what he said? Right? Well, then how can he be in charge if the devil's rude? The word tells us two kingdoms divided can't stand. Right? Folks, we have to make our choice. We have to make a decision. Are we going to be a part of this world? Or are we going to be a part of the kingdom of God? You can't have it both ways. If you, look, if you want to see somebody that has ever tried to have it both ways, you're looking at it. Bubba has tried to do it both ways, and it just don't work. It is one more miserable life. Do you hear me? You never get anything accomplished. There's always pressure on you. Somebody's always mad at you. Amen? No matter what side you're on, somebody's always mad at you. Right? You just, you can't do them both. Don't, don't get me wrong. Understand, we got to live in this earth. We got to live in this world. But we don't have to be a part of it. Hello? We don't have to be a part of it. We don't, let it, we don't have to let it suck all of the life out of us. Amen? That's why we have this word. That's why we have a heavenly father to go to. Right? To say, I need your help. Amen? Come into my heart and save me. Right? <clears throat> I'm not going to get political this morning, but I am going to say this. Do you know why they're shutting the churches down? Do you know why they're shutting the churches down? They're trying to take your hope away. They're trying to take my hope away. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because see, when they get us hopeless, when they get us where we can't depend on anything, then we got to depend on them. The government wants you solely dependent upon them. You two probably just kicked us off. But it's the truth. Hello? It's the truth. They're trying, to they're trying to spread fear everywhere they go. Amen? I'm not standing up here today and telling you that virus is not real. I'm not going to tell you that. I will tell you this. I'm not afraid of it. I'm not running from it. I'm not going to. Amen? I got sense. If I know somebody's got it, I'm not going to go over and hug their neck and kiss them. Amen? But at the same time, I'm not going to run my house and lock my door and say, Oh, Lord. That's fear. That's bondage, folks. That's bondage. Amen? Respect this disease, but get out of fear. Fear is torment. Amen? I see so many people walking around and they are tormented because of this. they just tormented. I mean, they in, they in their house by themselves wearing a mask. They in their car by themselves wearing a mask. I had a man tell me the other day, he even takes a shower with his mask on. Tell me how this works, folks. He's got, I, I'm not talking about it, but he's got to have one of the nastiest faces there is on planet Earth. If he's been wearing his mask all the time, and he even takes a shower with one on, how do you wash I'm confused. Let's wake up, folks. I mean, we all having a good laugh, but to this man, he's serious. He's in fear. It is really not. If he's listening this morning, he's mad at me because he thinks I'm making fun of him, which I'm not. I'm making a point. I'm telling you, fear is real. Amen? 
Fear is real. Fear will control you. Fear will make you do things you wouldn't ordinarily do. Amen. I have been in it. I know. I know. Fear will keep you up at night. Won't it, Momo? Fear will make you want to sleep with the light on. Fear. You think fear is from the Lord? You know, everybody, I hear a lot of people saying, they're going to put the fear of God in you. Well, I don't understand that because the Word always told me that the Lord said, fear not. So why is He going to put something in me that He don't want me to have? Amen? He says, fear not. Fear not. The Lord's not trying to put fear in you. The Lord's trying to become one with you. The Lord's trying to help you. Amen? But in order to do that, you've got to spend time with Him. You've got to cut your TVs off. I'm sorry. You've got to cut your radio off. You've got to put down your magazine. You've got to put your phone away. You've got to spend time with the Lord. Amen? The Lord invented wireless phone service before it was ever thought about. Prayer. Amen? So if he needs you, he's not going to have to go to that phone to get you. Amen? We need to get back to where he's truly number one. Amen? Truly number one. And that comes by one way, folks. By spending time with him. Amen? Spending time with him. Now, I'll assure you, if you sit down and you watch TV and you watch the regular news that's on TV, you're going to get up and think, I, there's no way I'd make it through tomorrow. It's so bad outside, I ain't, I'm not going outside. Amen? But I'm here to tell you today, it's not bad as they're telling you it is. They're trying to put fear in you. Amen? When was the last time did you heard of somebody dying of the flu? Me neither. When was the last time you heard of somebody having a heart attack? Me neither. You get the point? It's like this couple up in Chicago. They went and got tested and was found positive for COVID. On the way home, they were hit by a drunk driver going the wrong way on the interstate and it killed him killed him you know what caused the death was COVID correct COVID if you have symptoms it's classified as COVID you know what that meant for the family no closure they fighting right now to try to get it changed because see the way it stands now the guy that done wrong that actually killed him He's not going to be charged with it. He's not going to be charged with the vehicular homicide. It's like it never happened. He's been charged with DWI, reckless driving, and something else. But he will not be charged with manslaughter. He will not be charged with murder. He will not be charged with vehicular homicide. See, all that, all that goes by the death certificate. And the death certificate says COVID-19. Amen? You want to know why the number's out of this world? That's why they're out of this world. Amen? That's enough about that. Let's get back to the lesson. All that was free, by the way. It was the truth, though, but it's free. Let's see, verse number three. He said, Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Amen. He said, If you're spending time with me, if you're making me number one, and you're doing exactly what I tell you to do. Amen? Verse number five, he said, Blessed shall be thy basket and thy storehouse. Blessed shall thy be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thy be when thou goest out. He said, The Lord shall cause thine enemies to rise up against thee, to be smitten before thy face. They shall come against thee one way, and flee from thee seven ways. Amen? The Lord said, I'm going to put them in chaos. Have you, ever, have you ever seen chaos before? 
That was crazy, wouldn't it? We just, we've been in chaos for a year, ain't we? But that's from not being prepared. That's from not spending time with it. Amen? You think, you think 2020 slipped up on the Lord? I don't think it did. I think he knew all about it. Hello? Slipped up on us, though, didn't we? We're telling on ourselves a little bit, amen? Amen? I mean, I've seen some things. I've spent some time with him, and, and I've seen some things. But I'm going to tell you, I'm not where I need to be. So I'm not throwing rocks at you this morning. Amen? You watching through that camera, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I'll be the first to admit it. But I'm also the first to admit I know I need to be there. Amen? We all need to be there, folks. You want to change this next year coming up? You want to make this next year the best year you ever had? Get involved for Christ. Amen? Sink all you are and all you got into Him. And you see what happens. Amen. Amen. I can tell you this. You'll never, never outgive God. Never. Whether it be your finances, whether it be yourself, whether it be your time, whatever it means, you'll never outgive God. Amen. He's not a respectable person. Verse number 8. He said, The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouse and in thy... In thy storehouse and in all thy sittest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. He said, The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. Amen. I got that underlined in my Bible. If that's not underlined in your Bible, it's not a sin to write in your Bible. Underline that. That's an important part right there. Verse number nine. He said, The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. Not in the ways you've chose. Not in what you want to do. But in what the Lord has chosen for you to do. Amen? Folks, we have a life that, that we, can, we can go this way or we can go this way. There's several different ways we can go. Depending on what's got our time. Depends on the direction we go. Amen. Amen. It's important now, more than ever, that we get in this word. Amen. Folks, I'm not trying to put fear on you. But this next election that we're fixing to have, this is serious. This is serious. Amen. They'll have control. Without a miracle from God, they'll have control. I'm just going to tell you, I, I still believe my president's going to be president, but that's, that's, my, that's my opinion. You just have to sit back, I guess, and we'll have to see. Amen. But it's not going to be fun sitting around here when they, when they make just any kind of abortion legal. Amen? They're pushing for it. They're pushing for it. And I'm here to tell you, you heard it here first. If they win, they're not going to push for it anymore. They're going to pass it. Because they're going to put enough people in the Supreme Court to make sure they pass it. That can't happen. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Amen? It's not right, folks. It's not right. See, we've taken morals away from this country. Hello? Should have been a big amen right there. They've taken the morals away from this country. They have. They have. But you know what? It's our fault. We let them do it. We let them do it. But I think it's time we stand up as Christians and say, not anymore. I'm not talking about with guns and, and bombs. I'm talking about with the Word of God. Amen? 
Amen? I'm talking about getting in His Word, making Him number one and finding out what do we need to do. I can tell you, they may not nobody have a solution, but He's got it. The Lord's got the solution to this problem. Amen? Let's go after Him and ask Him to, to give us this solution, to help us, to show us what we need to do. Amen? Because without it, what are we going to have, folks? What are we going to have? But with Him, what have we got? With Him, we got hope, don't we? With Him, we know we're going to win. Amen? And as I said, I'm not trying to put you in fear. If you're born again, the Lord's going to take care of you. Amen? He's going to take care of you. But it's going to be kind of hard for Him to take care of, of our family members that are not born again, that are not trusting, that are not walking with Him. Amen? I'm not talking about doing this for us. I'm talking about doing this for our country, for our fellow man. Right? Or we can just continue to have fun. Amen? I don't know about you, but I hadn't had fun in a long time. I hadn't. I hadn't had fun in a long time. This virus has made it where nobody's had fun for a long time. Amen? Right? His name is Jesus. He is the answer. Every problem there ever, ever has been or ever will be, He's the answer. He is the answer. Amen? And as I told you, I don't have it, but He does. Verse number 10, he said, And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called the name of the Lord, and they shall, and they shall be afraid of thee. Excuse me. Verse number 11, And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. He's talking about blessing right here. Amen. He's talking about giving you a full supply of whatever you need. Verse number 12, he said, The Lord shall open, uh, open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto the land in his season, and to bless all the work of thy hand. He said, And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Amen. Wouldn't it be nice to be in a point in your life to where you didn't have to borrow anymore? You lend to somebody, but you don't, you don't have to borrow no more. I'm not saying borrowing and lending. I'm not saying that's a sin. But I'm just saying, would you like to be at the point the way you didn't have to borrow anymore? When you needed an automobile, you just went and got it. Amen? When your house needed work, you just, just had it done. You didn't go take out a mortgage. You didn't go sign your name online. His name's Jesus. People doing it every day. But you know what? They're not doing it by having their agenda. They're doing it by having His agenda. Amen? They're doing what He's told them to do. They go in the direction He's called them to go. Amen? Now, you've heard me. This is my story. You're going to hear it as long as I live. You know, when I first got started, the Lord, he, he had me doing certain things. And, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't really want to do them. It was a lot of work. It was hard. A lot of preparation. Amen? Amen? But I done it, and I didn't complain about it. And you know what? It just wasn't going right. Things just wasn't working. The more I went, the worse things got. Bills wasn't getting paid. All kind of things was happening. And I just stopped and said, Lord, help me. I don't understand. Am I not doing what you called me to do? Amen? And then the very next Sunday morning, the pastor come in, and he preached a message. If you be willing and obedient... You shall eat the good of the land. And I'm sitting there and I say, well, that's me. You know, I, this, I mean, I, I've been doing all this. And then the pastor said it again. The Lord said, if you be willing and obedient. And it dawned on me then. The Lord said, 
True enough, you've been willing. I mean, you've been obedient. But you hadn't been willing. You hadn't wanted to. You hadn't had my heart. You hadn't went after it like you should have because you didn't want it. Amen? So this morning, spending time with him, he said, if you be willing and obedient, not just obedient, but willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Amen? He wants us to. He wants us to. He wants all of us walking in His blessings 100%. But it's not up to Him. It's not. If you're not where you want to be, I can tell you right now, it's not His fault. It's not. If we're not where we need to be, if we're not where we want to be, it's our fault. Amen? I told you I'm not satisfied with where I'm at. I told you I'm not as far as I need to be. That's not His fault. That's my fault. Amen? Amen? You say, well, I'm doing all right. Well, when's the last time you raised the dead? Hello? Jesus raised the dead. He's supposed to be our example. Now, if we're doing all right, when was the last time we raised the dead? I'm not getting on toes. I'm just... You know, I'm not saying I'm out here sinning and running with wild women. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying looking at Jesus, I don't stack up. Right? And you know why? Because I spent too much time in this world. This world has been too big. This world has had too many things to take my time. Amen? This world will take your time. A little bit at a time. But you'll look back and you'll think, man, where did time go? Honestly, where did 2020 go? Seems like we were just here a few months ago. It's just flying by, folks. It's just flying by. And you know what? Every day, every day we get closer to the end. Every day. Every day we get closer to Jesus coming back. You know what? He's coming back. He's coming back. He, you know what he's going to be looking for? He's going to be looking for faith, ain't he? That's what he said. When I return, will I find faith? <clears throat> the answer to that is, have you been spending time in his word? Because that's where faith comes from. Faith comes from his word. If you've been spending time on CNN, if you've been spending time on Fox News, I'm sorry, you hadn't been getting any faith. You've been getting fear. And you've been getting lied to. Hello? And you've been getting lied to. But that's another message for another day. He said, when I return, will I find faith? And the only place that you and I can get faith is through this word. Amen? He said, faith in God comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen? Right? So we're not going to have faith walking our everyday life in this world. It's not going to happen. If it is, the Word's a lie. And we all know the Word does not lie, don't we? Amen? I can prove to you that the Word's not a lie. Because the Lord said, the Word was always going to remain. No matter what happened, the Word was always, always, always going to remain. Amen? He wouldn't let a lie remain, would He? So we know it's the truth, right? Amen? Folks, I'm not, you this here, you this watching through that, I'm not trying to put you in fear, I'm not trying to put you in bondage. I'm telling you, if you don't get involved, if you don't get on fire for the Lord. Amen? Amen? You watching through that camera, if your church is not open, I'm not telling you to leave your church, but you need to be in church. Amen? Everybody needs to be in church. We need each other right now more than ever. Amen? Amen? When they get us single, when they get us off by ourselves, they can take us out one at a time. But when we all together, when we come together, they can't do anything with us. So I'm not telling you to leave your church. 
But I'm telling you, you need to find the church if your church is not open. You need to push to get your church open. Amen? You say, well, we do it by Zoom, we do it by video. Well, that's good, that's fine, but that don't work. That don't work, amen? We done it here about three weeks, and I'm, I'm just going to tell you. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I want to see you eyeball to eyeball, face to face. Amen? Right? So don't think I'm, I'm mad this morning, aggravated. I'm not. I'm trying to help you this morning. His name is Jesus, and the only way he's going to be able to help you is to come together with his people. Amen? United we stand, divided we fall. Amen? And if you want a Zoom call, I'm sorry, but you divide it. Amen? You may, you may be hearing his voice, but you're not in his presence. Right? There's a difference. Amen? Come on in, brother, and have a seat. The Lord loves you this morning. He only wants the best for you, but he can't overshadow your will. He can't make you be happy. He can't make you accept him. That's got to be your choice. Amen? Whereas on the other hand, the devil is just opposite. He comes in and he forces his will, don't he? He forces his way, right? You make a mistake and you leave the door cracked about that much, and what does the devil do? He kicks it open, don't he? Amen? The Lord said, if he comes up to the door and it's cracked, what does he do? He said, I knock on the door and I sleep. Will you let me in? Right? You say yes, I come in. If you say no, I back away. I back away. So the problems that we have today, they're not his fault. Amen? They're our fault. They're, we as Christians, it's our fault. Amen? Let's do something about it. Let's change it. Amen? And the only way I know to change it is to get stuck, saturated, full of this word. Amen? And the only way to do that is to spend time with him. To cut all this other stuff out and spend time with him. Amen? I know we got to work, but we're not going to work 24 hours a day. We eventually going to get off. Amen? When we do, this is going to have to be your number one. Amen? Amen? I'm closing with this. But in the end, you can ask yourself the same question I did. My job is important to me. It is. But what's the most important to me? Is my job going to be the way I make it? Or is he going to be the way I make it? Is your job going to be the way you make it? Or is he going to be the way you make it? Amen? You know what? It's good to depend on that job as long as it's there. But what happens when it's gone? You're looking at a fellow that thought he was secure and had one, and all of a sudden, it was gone. It was gone. What do you do then? What do you do then? Let me tell you what you do then. You lose everything you got. So you don't have no other way. You got all your eggs in that basket over there. And when it went under, you went under. You lost your home. You lost your job. Amen? You lost your furniture. You had to file chapter 13 bankruptcy. You had to do all kinds of stuff. Right? Amen? But then you remember. You remember that the Lord's not mad at you. And He loves you. And He wants to help you. Amen? And you start getting involved with Him. And then you become a part of His covenant. Right? And then no matter what happens, the Lord don't let you go under. Right? But it's up to you. It's not up to Him. It's not up to me. Amen? It's not up to me whether you serve Him this morning. And it's not up to you whether I serve Him this morning. It's not up to Him whether I serve Him. It's up to me. Right? How important is it that we spend time with Him? And we serve him. Right? Because we want to. We be willing, 
and obedience. Amen? Folks, the Lord's looking for Christians this morning. Christians, disciplined followers. Disciplined followers. Just ready to be willing and obedient. Amen? I say it starts right here. Amen? I'm not saying we've done a bad job. I'm not throwing us under the bus. I'm not beating you down this morning. I don't, don't take that that way. I, I didn't come here to do that. I'm not trying to do that. Amen? So don't, don't get down on yourself. Don't get doom and gloom. That's, that's not what this is about. That's not what this is about at all. This is about giving you hope. Letting you know that we do have a chance. Amen? Amen? I love you this morning. Folks, if, honest to goodness, if I didn't love you, I wouldn't tell you the truth. But I tell you the truth the best that I can, that I see it, because I love you. Amen? Hey, the truth don't always feel good, does it? But you know what in the end? The truth will always be the truth. Right? Amen? Once again, I love you. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you watching through that camera. I pray for you every day. I pray for you that watch through that camera. I pray that the Lord give you something every time you, every time you turn it on. Amen. Whether you're watching it live or, or reruns, however you want to call it, anytime you're watching it, I pray that the Lord's blessing you with it. Amen. All right, let's have a closing prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, once again for the opportunity of coming into your house. Lord, I just thank you for each and every one that was here this morning. Lord, those that are watching through that camera, Lord, I thank you right now. Lord, for giving them exactly what they come looking for. Lord, I thank you right now for stirring their heart. Lord, for getting them motivated. Lord, for making us all wanting to be willing and obedient. Lord, I just thank you for it right now. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Once again, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching through that camera. We love you. God bless you. And God bless America. Amen.